CQ Stadium, Maryland, 31, Northwestern, 24. This is the big dog post game show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Mason, are you any happier tonight than you were the last time we were on against Purdue? Well, yeah, I think it would be hard to beat the lows, but and Maryland gets it done today. It wasn't pretty. It really wasn't what I expected, but the Terps uh, commit to the run in the second half and just uh, really beat up on Northwestern. They do, and I think that should have been the game plan the whole time. Billy Edwards did enough. Uh, he's got the pass to Jarrett. You can see that in the background here. The Hemby run to close it out was pretty big, but what an unusual last few seconds. Billy Edwards throws the ball away, and then it takes about another 10 minutes in real time to figure out if there's a second left. Uh, Billy Edwards' performance overall, what kind of grade do you give him? I got to go solid C. You know, he gets the job done. Some deep ball misses early, but really not a good selection of play calling to benefit what Billy can do. And really disappointed they went to the review there at the end to kind of ruin this place. Um, was alive for, yeah. I think, the first time in, in a long time. But you can see uh, Dante Demas and Rock Jarrett here dancing around as they go to sing the fight song. Got down 17 to 7. The play calling wasn't good. They, they at that point were still throwing the ball sideways and backwards. And at some point, and we were talking during the game, Maryland needs adversity to start playing some he-man big boy football. And down 17 to 7, they get the ball 88 yards away, drive down, use up the rest of the clock, they end up taking a field goal. But it was enough at 17 to 10. And much like a basketball game, you want to come out, get the ball back, and score. Maryland's defense comes up with a trade interception, and Maryland scores. And Maryland scores again, and if you if you keep in count, Maryland outscores them 24 to seven. I think the last 30 minutes of this game shows that Maryland really can play that Big Ten style of football that's heavy on the run, and once you step up to stop the run, they can hurt you with the pass. Well, right now you're seeing a team and a program that's in development, and the development steps are, you know, we don't respond at all, then we respond well when other teams bring adversity to us, and you would hope that with the recruiting, with the culture that Ryan Davis is trying to build in strength and conditioning, that in a year or two from now, you'll see a team that takes it to the other team. But like I said, when Maryland lost to Purdue, it takes a lot to turn a football program with a bad culture that had a losing mentality about it into a winning one, but winning games like last week and tonight are steps forward towards winning. You're not gonna win every one, but you got to take them when you can get them. Six and two, and I believe there's a big Maryland's bowl eligible sign. Let's behind move. Us. I'm going to move. There you can see it. It says bowl eligible. It's October. Maryland is bowl eligible. If When's you, the last time that happened? I, I cannot remember. It was probably 2010. Might have been. Look, whether you love Loxley or you don't, it's October. Maryland's bowl eligible. And whether we play great teams or not, they won the games. You only can beat who's in front of you. Maryland has done that. Yeah, there's some problems out there. Good. We can go over the fact that so many Our defensive starters were missing, but we're going to do that in the second half of the first game show. We'll go in and talk to Loxley. I'm sure we'll see Hemby. We might even get a safety or two with those interceptions that won the game. This is Wayne Viner. That's Mason. We'll be back after the Maryland press conference. With Viner Fourgates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Forgates, for making your company work is our primary mission. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. On the deck at Gossip, after the Maryland press conference, Mason, that took a while to get through those press conferences. Uh, yeah, it did. It was... Uh... 
an onset. Usually they get like three, four players around the uh, building today, one at a time, but um, some good good things from Roman Hemby, Dante Trader, and Billy Edwards, and all of them, I think, had one theme, which was when this team needed to make plays, they had guys that stepped up and made them, and they knew together as a team that they could win uh, if they just stuck to the plan, kept running the plays, that they, they would come together and win this game, even though it wasn't smooth all the way through. No, I think that they, all three of them, are really good examples of a student athlete. They, they really seem to, not only the football part, but the school part and the camaraderie part, and they're, they're impressive young men. Uh, some more takeaways from the game. Chad Ryland, after a bad snap and then a sack, uh, Billy Edwards, ends up with a 46-yard field goal, goes wide right. He hasn't been as accurate over the past couple kicks as he was when he, when he made 26 in a row. Yeah, I'm starting to think that um, this might be a hard stadium to kick in. It's, it's, they seem like we see a lot of missed kicks here, a lot of guys that get hot, and it's, you know, everybody talks about it. Right? You have your, like, elite kickers or Justin Tuckers of the world, mm -hmm. and then there's everybody else, and a lot of those guys are really streaky players, and Ryland just seems like he's on a bit of a downturn, and at one point, Maryland had a real weapon. Now it's shaky. Anything 45 and above, mm -hmm. do you really want to kick it right now? Or, you know, in that situation, clearly you kick it. You kick it there, yeah. and that, that could have ended the game, and, you know, it's talking to Bruce texting with Bruce as that went on, that was a game ender. And then and then it wasn't. And then Maryland had to come back and win it and still super impressive. Uh, Hemby ended up with a heck of a set of carries here. He has 181 positive yards, ends up with 179 net. It's pretty good, 24 carries, career high. Billy Edwards, as far as running the ball, as the purpose of running it, not the sacks, because the sacks come out of his rushing yardage, but he runs for 101. Then he got sacked and lost 35 yards, ends up with a net 66. Uh, found out after the game that Littleton, they knew he wasn't going to play when the game started. He got injured in warm-ups. So that was one more weapon, but everybody else on offense except Lee and Littleton play. On defense, man, a lot of guys were out. Yeah, it was. It was Vandarius Cowan, Ruben Hippolyte, Jay Sean Farham. So really thin through linebackers today uh, along on the defensive side. Gavin Gibson still out. Glenn Miller comes back. Dante Trader uh, talked about how helpful that was. They really needed uh, Glenn at times today. It looks seems like Isaiah Hazel at this point is completely out of the rotation. So for Maryland, do you, you like I said before, you win the game. You're a 6-2 and two football team. You go into the bye week. you got to get a couple guys back. And then... Look, opportunities knocking. Four and four Wisconsin on the road. Right. A Penn State team that right now is struggling to put up any points against Minnesota, and uh, home games against Ohio State and Rutgers to finish it out. You got to look ahead. Yep. This was check you, this box and move on. You got a season now. Six and two. You've got a season, and if you can beat Wisconsin and you can beat Penn State, ooh, that would be really something to get to Ohio State yeah. on that run. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here in a second. Final words. Yeah, favorite stat line from the day, Rakim Jarrett. 11 targets, 8 catches. You, you, they played the guys who were really good. They did cut the rotation down. It's a good win. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Thanks for watching the Big Dog Post Game Show. We look forward to seeing you in Madison, Wisconsin in two weeks.